So this is Eduardo Sanchez-Golic on Red and Green Prowess against Nikachu on, you guessed it, Merfolk. And this Surprising. is the fourth Merfolk deck that we have seen from Nikachu this time. This one being more of a sort of straightforward mono blue version of Merfolk. Who you got, Brian? Oh, man, that's a good question. I, You know, I, I think this, I'm, I'm going to go out and limb and say that I think this might be the time where Merfolk finally meets its its watery end. Uh, that's going to be my prediction. <laughs> it feels like we keep saying that, there, but it can't yeah. be that bad, right? It has won a lot of matches to get here. Yeah, that is that is true. Even took the extra, play an extra match just to reduce the card pool a little bit more path. <laughs> and we do have the turn one Rashad and Doc hand, which does line up pretty well against Monastery Swift Spear. Yep. It's but, it's no death rate shaman, but it does have the customary second point of toughness is very relevant. Yeah, internally we'll frequently call it the EST, the egregious second toughness as a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is valid. Very valid. All right, and we're starting off with Dragon's Rage Channeler, Mishra's Bobble, Surveil Trigger, leave it on top. Do you prefer that they bend it or leave it on top with the early Dragon's Rage Channeler? Which are you hoping for? Uh, I mean, I, I it's it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't, generally speaking. I, I probably prefer that they that they bend it because at least it's not exactly what they're looking for. But it does, I mean, I don't know. It does fuel their yard the other way too, so... Right, it's tough. Good. You don't want them to get the value, but also if they miss, that means that it's another shot that they miss. Yeah. And Aether it's... Vial off the top from Pikachu is really cool. Little little eighth card Aether Vial action. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> I played enough enough Aether Vial decks to be familiar with that. I was I was playing Leyline of the Guild Pact this last weekend and had a few few of those as well. Uh... Upkeep Rashad and something. Slows down Eduardo a little bit, maybe. Yeah, it really feels like he's not getting to use his mana how he wants to. The two drops in this deck are notoriously awkward, and drawing another copy of Tarmogoyf is something that I could see being good, but it is going to take a minute. Yeah, I mean, this hand is quite clunky. I will say. I mean, it, it has a lot of power, but it, it, it could be like a little too clunky and you just kind of slowly get rolled over by Merfolk, especially with the vial on two, just churning them out. Yeah, I think this is one of the ways that things can go wrong if you're in Eduardo's seat, right? This is a spot where you have a bunch of ground creatures against Merfolk. And even though they're a bunch of blue cards, they do have a decent amount of power and toughness in fair creature fights. Yeah, and and you sometimes get in a situation where it's like, okay, I can trade my Tarmogoy for one creature on the attack, but I might have to leave it back on defense because I can't win the race either, so. Ooh, okay, so we see Sorcery Speed, Lord of Atlantis. Interesting enough on Nikachu's side, but then Upkeep, Seek the Beast, the Adventure Hath. Yeah, that's... I think a good heads up play of like getting a little bit more value out of your actual draw. Uh, I could see it either way, really. I could see being interested in waiting or doing it this way. Yeah, in a lot of ways, it maybe just wants to make sure that you're going to be actually hitting a land on it, or it helps you know how much you need to hit that land. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it gives you way more information. That's, that's a very good point. I'm a little surprised that Nikachu ran out the Lord. I would have been interested in, in maybe playing the Trickster and eating one of the uh, uh, whatever those guys are called. I don't know. I'm blanking on the name right now. But... <laughs> yeah, the Dragon's Rage Channelers. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, part of me, I, I would guess the idea here is that he thinks that there's just going to be a spot that it's going to be worth more later. Like, he passed the turn with those not being turned on yet, so maybe the thinking is you hit that, or you can turn off a slick shot show off later, or just straight up eat a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. 
Another vial, not not optimal. Yeah, pretty awkward. This is a spot where it feels like Mikachu really just wants to hit another land or two so he can hard cast Tashana's Tidebinder and Subtlety. Though I guess the vial on the battlefield can kind of do that. Fourth bolt off the top for Eduardo. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice little uh, extra bolt action. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is gonna be tough. I, I mean, I think this this trickster is gonna get some nice value here on on some of the, one of these creatures, but I don't think with zero pressure in play, I just don't think it's gonna be enough. Yeah, this is one of the things that's so strong against the, about this prowess deck is even though its cards aren't individually that good, it you will just run out of life while you aren't able to quite get there with your more powerful cards. Yeah, this is an interesting spot where Eduardo could just say go to blocks and then bolt the trickster after blocks and save saves creature. I mean, I don't. Instead of going, because if you go for the bolt now, there could be, you know, another creature being viled in. Yeah, I, I think you do just want to let go of the Dragon's Rage channeler at this point. In a lot of ways, it's almost just done its damage, right? It's been worth five points or something like that. And there are so many other creatures that protecting this one is tough. Okay, well, there's the bolt. Yeah, it did, did, make a, did take that line of play, so... We'll see. We'll see how that works out. I mean, it. I imagine that it's kind of like almost like all roads lead to Rome situation where Merfolk so far behind is gonna be. It's gonna be tough to. Mm. Yeah. So looking at the other point of this, these Dragon's Rage channelers did surveil away a lava dart before. So Eduardo is actually presenting lethal by protecting this Dragon's Rage channeler. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a really good point. There's there's seven points killing, so and I don't really know how I, I don't really know if Nikachu has any like options to get out of it. I mean there are cards that can be drawn to buy a turn or two, but to actually like turn it around to win the game is, is probably gonna be pretty difficult. The big thing I could see happening here is if Eduardo were to lava dart. And then Tashana's Tidebinder were to counter the Surveil trigger on a Dragon's Rage Channeler mm. to take away its ability. But even that just kind of feels like treading water. Yeah. And I think that's if Eduardo even plays the Lava Dart pre-combat, could just go to combat, hit for six right. and play it. No, you're totally correct. That would be a nice play if that happens, though. Okay, so here Eduardo can pitch cast the subtlety and then Tidebinder the subtlety's evoke trigger? No, because then it loses flying the block. Never mind. I think it might just be that situation where it's it's specifically if, if Eduardo does play the spell first. Ooh, or uh, questing, or does seek the beast off questing druid here? Yeah, that would also, like, you know, do the same purpose. There is a point where and we're talking about all of these, and these are just to solve the one problem, right? There's still a Tarmogoyf in play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's still a second Dragon's Race channel. There's still a Tarmogoyf. Even if you don't die exactly this turn, are you? What are you doing? Uh, what are you doing next turn? Right, we're currently solving for the how do we ha let Nikachu have one life at the end of this turn, which and, is not actually no good. And nothing. I guess, yeah, I guess you would have maybe one creature left in play, but yeah. I think Eduardo's figuring out if he wants to seek the beast with subtlety on the stack so he doesn't have to draw the swift spear again. Okay, here is the vial. Well, now I think Pikachu's dead on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, it looks like that. That lava dart should do it. 
I think this would like if Mikachu was at a little bit better situation coming in, then that play makes a lot of sense to just get so much power into the onto the board to at least give you a chance to kind of stabilize a little bit, but mm -hmm. Okay, well here's Seek the Beast. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if there's something that's being played around here or maybe yeah. missed the, the darts. That, no, there is the dart. Okay, there it is. There's probably some spell to play around that I'm playing. Yeah, it, it might just be playing extra careful. I mean, it's hard to keep track every single version of Merfolk that Nikachu has brought, right? So there's a degree where you're just like, is this the spell pierce one? I'm going to look yeah. so dumb if it's the spell pierce one. Yep. Yeah. And we can see a ton of Nikachu sideboard coming in. Yeah, there's a lot of cards coming in. I mean, there are, looks like, what, four Aether Gusts? That is pretty pretty good. Yeah, what was that? Everything but Spell Pierce coming in? Tidebinder Mage is coming in. That's, uh... <laughs> That's a name I have not heard in a long time. <laughs> Yeah, that is that's uh like an old code, but it does check out, I guess. Like <laughs> what is that? That's red or green creature, right? It's yeah, basically, oh yeah. It's eight, Aether Gust number five. Yeah, five, six, and seven. Beautiful. Yeah, this is holy so that's tied three tidebinder four aether gust three chalice of the void and two more copies of dismember coming in for nikachu down to five cards not optimal Ooh, no that said looking at eduardo's hand like no there's no real removal here there is a world where eduardo ends up missing like a little bit on lands or i guess ha has the abundant Harvest, but you know, Edward is going to just kind of spin wheels here a little bit, and that that Spaloon could be good. Yeah, this is a spot where I think the big thing Edward is looking for is a copy of Slick Shot Show Off. So, when you have a Mutrous Bobble and two dra or a zero mana card, be it Mutagenic Growth or Mutrous Bobble, and dragon multiple Dragon's Rage Channelers and Underworld Breach, you don't literally go infinite, but you can attack for like 30. Yeah. With a slip shot show on. I actually almost submitted Eduardo's deck today. I played several leagues with it over the weekend. <laughs> nice. I don't know if that would be better or worse. I think it would be better for me if you had. I we'll see, I guess, but I I actually am not sure how you and I's uh blue white X versus Jun Creativity matchup goes. Uh but you saying that is encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just uh I'm just uh you know keeping the bar low so I can be I can be happy, you know. Can such power be taught? <laughs> no uh, <laughs> I don't think so, no. I have it here. So Dragon Rage Channeler, uh it has a trigger that's resolving before this abundant harvest. Our fire, nice. That is This is just old magic going on. Yeah, Tarfire, Tarmogoyf. We got we got Tidebinder Mage to lock down the Tarmogoyf. Dual decks, Tidebinder Mage versus Tarfire. Just sounds... Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to get my best people on it, you know? Yeah. All right, Mishra's Pablo finds a second copy of Underworld Breach. Not really one of the cards you usually need two of. Though, so Force of Negation in Nikachu's hand means it could come up. Yeah, it could actually be relevant because of that but it's kind of a situation where eduardo's like winning on board and winning in hand so it's going to be it's going to be pretty difficult uh like either way i think for nikachu mm. yeah getting to attack with three in the air with a dragon's rage channeler on turn two is just kind of the dream for these decks yeah and you know with with all stars like Tarfire, it's not actually that difficult. 
Oh, okay. So Nikachu plays the second Master of the Pearl Trident, offers the trade with a Dragon's Rage Channeler, which is not anyone's favorite. Maybe Eduardo's. Maybe. I think it's kind of a situation where neither maybe neither player is like that happy with that scenario, but it's it's kind of a forced play from both. Right, exactly. Yeah, I mean, Eduardo has all these cards in hand, so he goes, well, you know, if you're sure, I won't say no, but... <laughs> Maybe a breach here. We might actually see a double a double breach. Well, yeah. Probably going to see that force negation come down, I would guess. I wouldn't be surprised if it resolved. It's just representing... You know, we talked about it being an instant kill before. When you have a Dragon's Rage Channeler and a Mishra's Bobble, it is frequently just two mana draw like eight on your opponent's next step keep. Yeah, it's so many cards you get to draw. Still no land three. The gusts will delay things a little bit, but I don't know if delaying is where you want to be when you're kind of behind. Yeah, Nikachu really just wants to be able to develop this Spaloon in order to make up this card deficit that he's under. And this another is a, Underworld Breach. Yeah. Probably a must must gust situation, but you're not you're not thrilled about it. Right. At this point, we're really starting to hit the point where it's like, what do, what do the games that Nikachu win look like from this point? I, I personally don't know, so that is a genuine question, if you have a an idea <laughs> for a line. I think it I think the uh, like the scenario is that. The, probably the gust happens here. Spaloon comes down, and then Eduardo just bricks on like five or six extra cards from drawing with like Mistress Bobble and then Underworld Breach, and like somehow, I don't know, you 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 get in there because I mean there I guess there is what like Eduardo is at twelve, so it's not like not like it takes that long, but yeah. Dismember probably not going to be the thing that does it. No, no, I don't think so. I think this is oh, probably just... there's probably really no no realistic way out at this point. This is so tragic for anyone who's a Merfolk fan. It looked like you know we were even joking about it a couple of minutes ago coming out of the sideboard. Wow, look at all of this! But well, looking to five on the play is just so tough. Yeah, it's. Especially against a deck that's packing so much interaction. Our fires, lava, lava darts, bolts, etc. Right. In a lot of ways, we, we talk about disruption backed up by pressure, usually to refer to blue decks, but when most of your game plan is rooted in creatures, lightning bolts and tar fires are interaction, and Dragon's Rage Channeler is obviously pressure. Yeah. Yeah, the power of Dragon's Rage Channeler has been on display both of these games. Now, now, what every mistress bubble takes only one card out of the graveyard. It looks like was that like six? You draw six cards of, effectively, or something close to that. Minimum, it might even be more if you factor in these lava darts in Eduardo's hand, each netting cards as well. True. Yeah. Probably. I mean, it's not optimal. I think you probably have to fire off this member here, and you're gonna you, you net lose one point of life because you're gonna be taking three from the dragon's rage anyway but okay I mean, well it looks like the first one is gone through yeah okay so Mishra Bobble resolves goes ahead and sacks it it's like one I guess this yeah lava dart here. Won't be able to put another Dragon's Rage Chandler into play, but can still go off pretty heavily. Yeah, and it looks like Eduardo started to cast another Bobble and realized he wanted to attack when he definitely had Delirium. All right, Dismember does finally go after the Dragon's Rage Chandler after Eduardo goes to combat. Yeah, take take one point of damage here, but you will save yourself. Some amount of cards, I guess. Is it dart time? 
there's a not zero chance that okay so tar it looks fire. like flashing back tar fire here or excuse me escaping tar fire here these dragon's reach channelers might hit mutagenic growth which i believe is an eduardo's deck and could outgrow dragon's reach channeler from this yeah that would oh, oh there it is it happened <laughs> that is that is sick that is awesome double mutagenic Stop me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 let let him go oh. anyway. Oh, I have a feeling he meant to do that twice. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. that is what Nikachu needed to happen. Yeah, that that yeah, this is actually like in line with a possible way out. I don't think it's going to be enough because. Delirium still online. I I guess if Nikachu draws a piece of removal here, I don't know what there is that isn't dismember. Oh, the Tide Binder oh. Mage. There we go. Uh, there's two <laughs> two bolts in Edward's hands. Yes. <laughs> oh, this is I'm, tough I, yeah. where, uh, Eduardo just has bolt, bolt, dart, dart, dart. Slug shot so, show off just in case. So if 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 Nikachu were at 37 life instead of seven life, maybe. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we do see <laughs> Slick Shot show off, go off to the face, lightning bolt joining it. And a lava dart as well, just to, to finish the job. Sadly, for any Nikachu fans, that is going to be the end of his run. But for any Eduardo fans, it looks like we are going to see Pikachu concede, and that is Eduardo Sachgalic onto the top four.